Hi everybody, it's Marcy, and today we're going to be working on a greeting card journal, which is Dear Julie Julie's Mini Challenge in the Challenge number two for the month of May. So I've got some scrapbook paper pulled out and uh, this scrapbook paper, I've also got some embellishment things that I can use with it. And I've got a variety of papers pulled out. We have to have at least five different types of paper. The scrapbook paper will be one, and then I've pulled out some other things that I may or may not use. So I've got that, and then the only thing I don't have is the greeting card. And that is because normally I make my own greeting cards. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take just an 8.5 by 11 piece of cardstock, and I'm going to cut it in half at 5.5 inches. So in half lengthwise. So now what I end up with is two greeting card faces. So pull out my scoreboard. And it is eight and a half inches wide, so I'm going to score it at four and a quarter. And fold it down. I'll put that, I'm going to go ahead and do this one as well since I've got it here. folder and fold those down and um, I forgot what I was going to say. I'm sure it was earth shatteringly important. This video will probably have lots of breaks in it because I really don't know what I'm going to, I sort of came up with an idea, but not really. Okay. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I actually need to make myself some notes because I'll forget my measurements because I'm slow like that. So my card is four and a quarter by five and a half. So I'm going to want my cover pieces to be four by five and a quarter. And I will want my pages to be no larger than five and a quarter by... I'm going to say eight across, folded in half would be four. Okay, so at a max, that's what I'm going to want for my page sizes. Okay, so first I'm going to work on the cover. And I'm going to start it out just like I would any other greeting card that I might be making for my cover. So first, I'm going to get rid of my strip, and that's all. Okay, so I wrote it down. I'm going to cut it 
four inches wide by is that right? Yeah. By five and a quarter long. All right, and that's going to be the first layer on the front of my card. Now, I'm going to go ahead and cut five and a quarter again. So that I've got one for the back of the card. And what that does is that leaves me an eighth of an edge, eighth of an inch edge all the way around the card, roughly. Okay, then for the front, take off my strip again. I want I think this area on the front, but I want my border to show, so we would need three and three quarters by five. Let's see what we get at So we get, all right, let's take a risk. So we could do that. We could do that. I think that's really what I want to do. So all right. Sorry, it's hard for me to think and talk at the same time. All right. Did I do that right? Four by five and a quarter. Five and a quarter. Four. Okay, and then five, three. Okay, so that will be the front of my journal. Of course, it would help if I had the card turned the right way. That will be the front of my journal. And then I will put that on the back. So, instead of having you watch me, I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to glue these pieces down. And then I will be back. Okay, I've got my papers all glued down, and I did round the corners on all my papers and on my card. So now, the next thing I want to do is add a button for my closure. And I want to do that before I start adding my inside papers. 
because I don't want it to be visible. So what I've done is on the inside, I marked over, I came over five-eighths of an inch and halfway down the card. Now for me, I, I will be using a little hairband to close this with, and black is the only color I have, so that's what I'll be using. So that means I don't want the button to be flush. I need to leave room for the band to be able to come under the button some. So what I'm going to do is I've got this larger needle, not huge, but I'm going to place it across the center and I'm going to use a couple of pieces of washi tape to temporarily hold that. Okay, then I'm going to take my button, and I'm, I'm doing this from the inside so I can see what I'm doing. Get it lined up as best I can, and I'm going to go ahead and pre... punch the holes that I want my thread to go through. Uh, Okay, I can see that from this side, so that's perfect. Okay, now I've got my thread, or my needle already threaded, and I'm just using some crochet thread here. I'm going to start on the inside, and I'm going to leave a tail so I can tie the ends of my string. Get my button on. and go back through. Why is it not coming through? And I know you are probably thinking there we go. Uh well you've got the needle on the wrong side, but it will actually work because it'll keep me from tying the string too closely to the paper. So then the, it will allow the button to move a little bit. Okay. So again, I'm not going to have you sit here and watch me struggle with hand sewing. So I will do this and I will be right back. Okay, so I, I got my button sewn on. I took the two ends and not, uh, tied them in a knot so it won't come undone. So I'm going to clip the ends and move my washi tape. Pull that needle out and on the front side we should have a little room for the band to be able to slide under the button and that's all I needed. I needed just to have that sort of shim under there so that it the button didn't because this is a pretty flat button flat bottom button. Uh, 
So that ought to work just fine. Okay, that I think is where I'm going to stop this video. What I need to do next is I need to put my inside papers in and I need to have a uh, inside cover pockets. So I'm going to do that. And I will go ahead and figure out what pages I want to go in my journal and put them in so that when I come back, we will start making some of the other required elements for this little journal. So be safe, stay healthy, happy crafting, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.